so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and make a uh, object with a class definition and we're going to kind of come up with some attributes we're just going to call this class person right and there's obviously different objects that we can kind of create and assign attributes to and procedures and stuff but uh, for now let's kind of get some you know possible attributes that we can measure something we can put a number to or a name to or whatever uh, and we'll uh, we'll go with that so the first suggestion that was said uh, before the recording was uh, height so you that way when you create the object, yeah, you can assign those if you want, but you can sort of, you know, default to them in case you forget one, right? So we'll say five feet six inches or sixty-six inches is the height, and uh, let's think of some other uh, attributes about a person. So raise your hand if you come up with some attributes about a person, something that you can quantify or is easily, you know, assigned. So over here, uh, a what? I don't know if you can quantify that. I mean, you know, big, medium, small, maybe, but I don't know. I say over here. Age, that's a good one, right? That's something. Let's let's uh let's say we're all about sixteen-ish, right? Except for me, I'm not sixteen. Okay, yeah. If you're a senior, you're older, right? So we'll go with age, and we'll say that's sixteen. Another example. Eye color. That's a good one, right? Okay, let's go with brown for default. Okay, actually, I forgot. I need an underscore here. Eye color equals. Yeah, you can't have spaces in your variables name variable names. Okay, let's go two more. Two more things we can sort of describe. Yes. Hair color. All right. Okay, hair color. Uh, let's go with, we'll go with brown for that too. Okay, as default colors. And one more, one more thing we can kind of define about this. Weight, okay, weight's good. Weight's good, yeah, we'll go with that. Let's say, let's say 140 pounds. And let's, let's add in name, okay? Uh, we'll call him Bob, okay? Bob. All right, Jim Bob, yeah, we'll go Jim Bob, we'll go, we'll go Bob. All right, so once we, so basically what, we're, what we have here is we have, and I, I messed something up, let's see. Uh, oh, I forgot self. Okay, one more thing you need here, and that's self. All right, and you can think of this as again, sort of a when we type this in to Python. There we go. Um, we type this into Python. We're going to be naming the object itself, kind of like a variable name. So when we reference that variable name, we reference it with the, with the word self. Okay, so when we want to adjust that object's parameters or attributes, I should say, then we would use self dot and then the name of the name of the uh, variable. So the initialization is sort of a what happens first, and that's what we're defining here. This procedure is, and you can see it's in a different color to mean it's sort of a stored procedure. This is the procedure that makes the object available for use to apply procedures and things like that. Okay, so when we type that in, we're going to have to just make a quick list of assigning attributes to the object based on all the arguments that are passed to it, okay? So we'll just kind of go down the list, basically like this, right? The first variable is height, right? So we're gonna type in self.height equals height, okay? And I'll just make sure I'm doing that right, yep, okay. Self.height equals height, and then we can just basically rinse and repeat for the next few variables. And we can even change the name of the variable too if you want. Like I can, I'll show you later, maybe I'll truncate those uh, color variables, right? So self.age equals age. Now, instead of eye color here, I'm gonna do this, self.ec, okay? And that equals eye color. Think of it, yeah, you could think of it as just an abbreviation, right? Eye color, ec, right? Self. I'll do it with hair color too, right? hc, and that equals hair color. So think of it as arguments that are passed on, right? And then we're now assigning these to a variable attributes, to the object's attributes. And we have weight, and then we have name. Oops, I almost typed in the argument itself. Okay, and that's it. So now what happens is when you, if you were to run this program, right now there's no procedure, we haven't defined anything for the, for, to do with this data yet, but if you were to run this program, you could start an object, you can basically instantiate an object that has all these attributes or whatever attributes you assign. And we can usually test what those are with IPython if you want, uh, but it's more interesting when we can do something with them, okay? So our initialization procedure is finished. So we'll backspace to the first indent level. Now what happens is every time we define a function or a routine, that method is stored with this object. So we can have this, basically have this person do a variety of things. Okay, and we can define procedures to do that. For example, just as a so, so, so sort of throw something out there. Maybe they're tired of their hair color. Maybe there's a procedure for them to change their hair color. So let's kind of go with 
define hair dye. All right. And let's make sure we're passing the right things. Yes. Okay. So just self. Oops. That's what you should be doing. All right. Doing it so you know it. Right. So let's bless you. Bless you. Okay. So let's think of it this way. Let's go ahead and let's get some user input. Okay. So let's print. What color would you like to change to? Right? This is sort of asking a user prompt, right? And then we can ask for raw input. So we can say self.hc equals, bless you, raw input color colon, right? And that's it, right? Now, again, we can kind of run this ourselves, but I'll show you how we can sort of menuize it as well uh, in a little bit. So let's test our code real fast, okay? okay? Let's test this code. Let's check this out. Let's see if it works, okay? So I'm going to store this, um, this information, okay? And here's what I'm going to do. Here's the syntax, all right? Let's say this person, okay? Let's say this person, instead of being Bob, let's say this person is a Carl, okay? So we're going to say... Carl equals person, and then we're going to define attributes about 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 Carl. How tall is Carl? Six feet tall. Okay, he's uh, sixty-two inches tall. No, he's more than that. What am I talking about? Derp. Yeah, I just realized the default height is four feet six. Uh, no, I'm sorry, it is five feet six inches. I'm sorry. So he's six feet tall, seventy-two. Okay, that was right. Uh, how old is Carl? Twelve. He's twelve. Okay. What's his eye color? Blue. Blue. Okay. What's his hair color? Purple. Sure. Why not? Okay. How 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 heavy is he? Two hundred ten pounds. Okay. And his name is Carl. No. All right. Carl with a K. You want Carl with a K? Well. Okay. Fine. We'll go Carl with a K. But that should be confusing because I've named it Carl. But let's go back and change that too. Okay. So now here's the deal, right? We hit enter. And then IPython just goes to the next line. So what happened? We, changed the value. we now have an object named Carl, and Carl has attributes. You want to see them? Sure. Carl.age. He's 12. Uh, Carl.weight. 210 pounds. 12 and 210. Mm. Self.eye color. Oops, I'm not self. I might call Carl.eye eye color. Blue. Okay. Kind of put that up there, right? So we can basically call up those attributes, right? And we can just check them to make sure we kind of put them in like that, right? So we can use IPython to reference those and check that, right? Now, so far, I've only defined one procedure that we can do to Carl, and that's change his hair color. So how do I call that? What do you think? Do I do hair dye, hair dye Carl? Do I? Answer is no. Bless you. Bless you. So I can't do that. So how do I do it? Let's ask this question. Who's got the routine hair dye? Carl's got the routine hair dye. Who has the eye color that we know so far? Carl, right? How did I call that up? Carl.ec, right? So how do you think I call hair dye? Carl.hair dye. And now it runs that procedure. Remember how we said, what color would you like to change to? Okay? What color should we change his color his hair color to? Purple. Purple. It's already purple. Right? <laughs> red. Okay, it's red. We're going with red. Red, let's go with it. Just let's, let's get it. Red, red with a hint of blue. Why not, right? Okay, red with a hint of blue. And now if we call in Carl.hc, his new hair color is red with a hint of blue. Oh nice. So see we can write procedures to change all of his attributes. Or some of his attributes. Right? Maybe Carl, maybe Carl starts exercising and starts lo starts losing some weight, right? We can write a procedure. We can write write a procedure that kind of asks the same information, right? Okay, and we can write a procedure that we can even write a procedure that calls all these functions itself. Let me do that for you, and then I'll get let you let you play with this and kind of come up with your own so, sort of object, and you can have some fun with it. Okay, so let's try check this out. I'm going to define a menu routine okay and here's the menu routine right 
print. Right? Maybe hair color change could be one object, right? One option. Maybe um, eye color. Maybe maybe he starts wearing colored contacts or something like that, right? Changes eye color, right? Print weight change, right? Maybe I have a routine called status report, right? To kind of print out all of his attributes so we don't have to keep calling them up in IPython, right? Or right, and the last one could be, okay, I'm done. Leave this menu, right? Choice equals int of raw input. Make your oops. Make your selection, right? And I can even loop this too if I want to. Let's make a loop. Let's make a loop. Why not? Right? We can sort of make it so that the user is locked in this menu until they say otherwise, right? So let's say choice equals zero. While choice is not equal to five. Run this loop. Okay. You could do that. Sure. No, I'm saying like normally not equal to is not that, isn't it? Oh, you know what? Yeah, I think I left this over from basic. I don't know if it works. Maybe it does. Okay. Maybe it does. But anyway, okay. Choice. I will. Yeah, I will test it. Once I write this, once I write this procedure, I'll check it out. All right. Now, I can do here. I can say if choice equals one, I can do self dot hair dye. Right? I believe that's how I'm typing. Let me, let me make sure. I'm going to check my... Uh, let me check my procedure. One more time. Self. Yep, that's right. Okay. I did that right. Okay. Self.hair die. Right? And I forgot the colon here. Right? I can do a series of else ifs as well. What did, you I, have to actually what did I forget? Oh, double equals. Stuff. Double equals. Yeah, of course, you have to have that routine. I did. I have a, that one up You're here, right? just hair dye, though can't do two, three, four, or five. Well, no, you're right. I have to. I would have to write routines for each of those, right? So, right, I can type, type in a else if choice equals double equals two, then I can sort of call self dot, you know, I change, right? And I haven't defined a routine that's called that, so it's going to give me an error if I do that, so I'm just going to comment that out, right, for now, okay? And so forth and so on. Now, I have a, oh, I actually need to close parentheses there. Okay. So, so I can go ahead and I can, I can sort of call in functions, right, within the function as well. So if I restore this and I initiate Carl again, right, let's go back to where we had Carl's, there it is right there, right? Carl's got this. Now Carl has that additional routine, so check this out. Carl.menu. Okay, whoops, I forgot to put the parentheses. Carl.menu. And see how it goes into that routine. Obviously, only one of these is going to work. So let's say if I type something else like three, it'll call the menu again. If I type two, it'll call the menu again. I haven't programmed the other choices yet, right? But if I call one, now it'll ask me for the hair color change, right? So I can sort of have an ongoing menu, right? And then watch, if I change the hair color to uh, blue, right? I don't need the quotes, blue. It'll bring me back to the menu when I'm done, right? And then I'm done. Okay, leave the menu. See you later. Right? So you can sort of make yourself a selection menu. That way you don't have to keep calling the functions. All you have to do is call the menu and let the menu call the functions. Okay? Which is kind of helpful. All right. So um, we've gone over some procedural stuff. We've gone over how to initiate an object. And what I'd like you to do now, okay, if you want, you can program uh, a, your own person function. You can program something else if you want. You can program an object that's not a person. You can program pretty much whatever your imagination wants, right? And you can basically <laughs> define at least five attributes about that object. And then I would like you to write procedures for each attribute. And they can be, they can be structured the way I've done it as well. You can make random attributes as well. They don't have to all be strings. They, can, they don't have to be all integers. They can be floats. They can be all that stuff to it, right? And uh, be creative. I think that this is sort of your time to kind of, you know, come up with something interesting, something cool that you can kind of show off to everybody. So before we do that, before you, you know, kind of give you some time to do that, I just want to kind of show you what I'm working on, right? This is that little combat game that I'm kind of working on. This one's a little bit more involved as far as 
uh, things, but kind of the same thing, right? It's just there's a lot more attributes. So I have all these different default attributes, and I have all these different stats that are plan I plan to use in the uh, in the setup of the game itself. And then I have a choice menu that kind of gives you a menu of how, and this is, again, structured around what I programmed back in 1995, I, be I believe. 1995, I did it in basic originally. In QBasic, excuse me, it's QBasic originally. And uh, this is kind of the rundown. I can, I can actually show you the actual program later, uh, later on this period if you want. I believe I still have a, I might even have a copy of it on this computer. Um, so anyway, so again, it's kind of the same thing, right? If you've got the choice equals this, you can run the fight routine, which I don't have defined yet. You can run the in, the status report, the weapon shop, armor shop. And I have a few of them already defined, and I can kind of show those to you. Uh, and I started writing different things as well. And uh, I can kind of show that to you. Let's check this out. So if I run this one, let's call Jeff dot combat arena. Uh, and I probably have to do And i got to plug in a tour. Look at that. Uh, go back to that. I forgot there's a capital C there. Combat arena, right? And of course, I got to do this Jeff equals combat arena. My fault, right? And I didn't define that yet, or did I? Oh, it is lowercase. Okay, I just forgot to assign it right. Sorry. <sighs> Jeff equals combat arena, right? Stands the object, and I can do Jeff dot choice, and with the parentheses would help. There we go. And then here's that menu, right? And if I do the status report, that's basically prints out all the attributes. And the only things that do work that that work right now is the weapon shop. And I have nothing, right? I can leave the shop with an 11. I can just type in the name, right? I'm just coming up with different names. I just, you know, don't worry about that. Um, and then if I go to the armor shop, that also works too. I haven't adjusted the uh, names or all the things yet for that. So it's early stages. And then when I'm done, hit six, and I'm back to that Python, right? But same kind of idea. It's the same kind of same kind of programming method, right? Okay. So again. Your job now, and this is your assignment 141. You're not going to do what's in the document for 141. You're going to be doing something else, okay? So, and I'll write that in the introduction. I'll put the introduction in there, but I'll just sort of give you the rundown of what you're going to do. You're going to create an object, a class. And that class, it could be a person. You could sort of define your own, you know, person and your own attributes that, for that person. And I want you to have an initialization function, and I want you to have methods associated with changing the attributes. And I would like you to get creative in there. You can ask for raw input for one example. You could have a randomly assigned attribute change. You could, um, you could, you know, there's lots of different things that you could do and I encourage you to be creative with it, okay? So in order for this to be a 100, you must have one object, one class. You must have an initialization routine with at least five attributes. The more the better. And then you must have a routine at least a routine per attribute, okay, to kind of adjust things. And if you want to program them very similarly or very basically, that's fine. If you want to get more creative and make more things happen and be more be more fun with it, please also do that, okay? That's your assignment. All right.